here we have another question from the UK Maths Challenge Junior Challenge and with permission from the UKMT I'm now going to go through it. As always I recommend having a go first and seeing if your answer matches my answer. Okay, in a sequence of positive integers, uh, integer just means whole number, as in like a, a 1 or a 2 not a 1.5 or something like that, any decimal. In a sequence of positive integers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., every term after the first two terms is the sum of the two previous terms in the sequence. If the fifth term is 2004, what is the maximum possible value of the first term? 399, 400, 663, 999, or 1001. Our first idea might be to guess different numbers, because it all seems a bit complicated. But how about we just take the, the first one that they give us as 399, and let's say the next term in the sequence is, I don't know, 10. Notice, by the way, it didn't say that it's an arithmetic sequence, as in it's not going up by a certain amount each time. This is any sequence. It could be any different numbers. The pattern could be anything. Or in this, t in this case, the pattern is that you add the previous two terms. But it's not going to go up by the same amount each time. It's not an arithmetic sequence. Okay, if those are the first two terms, what they're saying is if you add the first two terms, you get the, the next term. So adding those two, you get 409. Add the previous two terms, and you would get 419. Add the previous two terms, and you would get 828. But, blimey, that seems like a pretty tough method to just keep guessing different numbers. After all, that 10, I just made it up. It could be anything. It could be 100. How on earth would we ever narrow it down so that we could actually find out what the first term is? Because we know the fifth term is supposed to be 2004. Let's, instead of guessing, use a much more rigorous method. And for that, I need to introduce you to my closest friend, Mr. Algebra. Hello, Mr. Algebra. Hello. Now, Mr. Algebra is going to help us, hopefully, to solve this question. And as Mr. Algebra helps us to solve so many questions. Yeah, I do. So yeah, can you, Mr. Algebra, help us with this question? Yeah, I can. OK, let's go. Now, let's call our first term x. There we go. We're using algebra. We're using letters. Thank you. You can go away now. I don't want to go. You have to go. So if the first term is x, the next term would be y. Again, we don't know what it is, so we just invent a new letter for it. What would the third term be? It's the sum of the previous two terms. So it would be x plus y. Can you guess what the next term would be? The next term would be x plus y plus the y. So it's x plus 2y. How about the next term? It would be x plus 2y. Add the x plus y. That's two x's and three y's. Here's where it comes in handy. Those letters could represent any positive integer, but we know what they equal. That fifth term, we know it equals 2004. So we have this strange equation. 2x plus 3y equals to 2004. How could we use that? Oops, that's not going to look very nice. How could we use that to solve our challenge? See if we can have some sort of, okay, our background's not going to work. Last try, black. Okay, yeah, that just about works. 2x plus 3y equals 2004. Now here's the thing. We want the maximum possible value of the first term. The maximum possible value. As in, we want x to be as big as possible x needs to be as big as possible. So ideally, x could be like a million. 
but obviously it has to add up to 2004 and they're both positive, so that can't work. But it strikes me to look first of all at 1001. That would seem to be the biggest possible value of x. 2 times 1001 would be 2002. Now 2002 plus 3y equals 2004. But hang on a second, y has to be an integer. And there's only 2 between 2002 and 2004. Now, if there's two left over, and it's three times something, that would have to be a decimal. It would have to be like, it would have to be three over two, 1.5. As you know, that, that would be two over three. Because three times two over three would get you to two. And then 2002 plus two would be 2004. To cut a long story short, it would be a decimal. That wouldn't work. Here's another way to think about it. If y needs to be as small as possible, to make x as big as possible. So let's treat y as like 1. Now, y has to be positive, so it can't be minus something. But let's try y as 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Take away 3 from both sides, and you have 2x equals 2001. But if you divide by 2, you would get a decimal again, 1,000.5. So it can't be, x can't be 1,001. Let's try the next one, 999. So 2 times 999 plus 3y equals 2004. Let's see if that works. 2, th two times 999 would be, it's almost 1,000, so we just go 2 times 1,000 and take away 2. That's 1,998 plus 3y equals 2004. What's the difference between 2004 and and 1998, it's 6. Here we go. So 3y would have to be that difference of 6. Now that looks much more like an integer or a whole number. Divide by 3 to both sides, and you get y equals 2. So that would be the smallest possible value of y, and so the biggest possible value of x of 999. That was so fun.